G'day, Glenn Morris here from the Smart Energy Lab, and today we're looking at the Hoy Miles microinverters. Yep, that's one behind me there. That's their single MPPT unit suitable for a single module. They also have multiple MPPT units, so let's go and check them out. One of the great things about microinverters is that they have individual MPPTs. And in this unit, there's actually four. That means I can have four panels connected to one microinverter. This unit here is a 2000 VA. That's like 2000 watts in something the size of a laptop. High miles make really compact, really efficient, and really durable microinverters. But the cool thing about microinverters is you don't have to have the same modules on every input. Look at this crazy setup here. I've got everything from a little uh, 60 watt panel on one input right through to <laughs> a 375 watt module uh, down the end here. And it doesn't matter. So you can mix and match uh, old and new panels on the same microinverter. But like I said, the comms is really good. So let's check out the DTU. So this little white box behind me is the data transmit unit. There it is there. Now, what I'm really impressed with from Hoy Miles is their communication system. This little unit connects to the cloud, so we've got cloud monitoring, but how does it connect to the microinverters? Through an industrial strength Wi-Fi signal. Now, just to give an example, we're actually uh, between some panels with a microinverter, two shipping containers and a corrugated iron wall all of that and the data transfer unit still picking up the, the information from the microinverters. So that's what I call industrial strength Wi-Fi. It's pretty cool. So let's check out an installation that I did a few months ago and some of the tips when installing a microinverter system. Today, I'm actually gonna be installing the High Miles. This is their uh, 700 watt unit you know, or 700 VA to be really technical about it. Uh, it's designed for um, dual modules. So we can have two modules, uh, one on the left, one on the right, um, connected to the, the AC trunking cable. So we're gonna just put two panels up here on the um, demonstration wall. Uh, we're going to mount the microinverter um, behind it here. Not quite sure exactly where I'll put it. Um, probably on the rail as it's supposed to be so that we can see the small LED on the front. Now, this little LED actually is a status light. Um, so it tells you things like, uh, is the grid available? Is it synchronized with the grid? Is it operational? So it's basically got a little green light when it's operational, little red flashing lights searching for grid. It's a really light little unit. Look at this thing here. Awesome, completely weatherproof. It's got an integrated antenna. See the antenna here? So it transmits to the, the data communication unit, uh, which is actually on the other side of that wall, but it could be a long way away. In fact, I've got some modules about 30 meters and several shipping containers uh, away, and it, through all that steel, it's still communicating. So that's pretty awesome. Let's get this little, uh, little baby up on the wall, shall we? Cool. Yeah, so this is a dual clamp. So it's got 35 mil end clamp and 30 mil end clamp in the one unit, just by swapping where the screw's mounted. So, or penetrating through the unit. So it's got two holes, one for the 35 and one for the 30. So we're doing the thin framed 30 mil panels here. And uh, so I just adjusted it, easy peasy. Now the only challenge is to, to get it up on the wall, uh, which is not a very ordinary sort of installation. You have a unit like this mounted on the wall. Now these panels need a bit of a clean. In fact, I should turn it around. So these are Canadian solar 370 watt modules and just got to bring the fly leads out so we can get to them. I should put some cable clips on this before I put it back up on the wall. And we'll rotate it around the right way. Junction box is upside down at the moment. Um, I'm just going to record the mole number here and also the serial. It's useful to, to keep track of all of your products, whether it's for STCs uh, or for just your own personal records.
And next to it, we have the 415 watt Jinko panel. So very similar sort of sizes, but it's just uh, the cell density, the efficiency of the cells, etc., mean that you get different wattages in the similar sized packages. Panels are getting big. In fact, it's getting a bit of a problem physically handling them. Certainly two people really is required these days. Certainly if you're working on a roof, even with edge protection, which is mandatory, of course, in many states in uh, Australia. And uh, it's always important to work safely. But here, standing on the ground at the Smart Energy Lab, I'm not going to fall. About the highest I'll get is, uh, <laughs> is standing on my little stool. Don't laugh. This is my ladder. So just pairing this unit for mounting. Now, it's important that you use the same type of plug and socket on either side of the connection. What's a bit confusing is these MC Evos. So a company called, well, they used to be called Multi-Contact. Everyone calls them MC now. Uh, these are their 1500 volt rated plugs, but they're actually rated to connect to the MC4s of the opposite gender. So even though they look different, they're from the same manufacturer, and actually they're rated to be uh, plugged into each other. You can't just use any generic work alike it has to be the same brand same type both sides of the connection uh, and in this case the manufacturer permits that uh, you could call it a mismatch but different versions of the same model uh, 1500 volt version connected to the 1000 volt mc4 so that's uh, important details it's one of the areas that's really overlooked is that the plug and sockets are often the point of failure if they're not um, matched and also if the installer making a home run cable has done a poor job it just hasn't used the right tools for the crimping and the and the mechanical restraint on the cable as well just got to watch that got the lily bag here <laughs> so awesome little clips here these clips are for securing the cables to the back of a module now Proper cable support's important. You don't want your cables all lying on the roof uh, where they're exposed to mechanical damage from abrasion, from blowing around in the wind. Uh, also, you just want to look good. These are a great solution, these little clips. Now, we can support the cables here by putting the clip on and attaching the cable. Piece of cake. Because we're going to put the microinverter in the middle of these two panels, um, we're going to basically bringing the leads over to a, a common point over here. So, looks like I've got a bit too much of this one. So, I'm just going to call it up here and one more for good measure. Now, these clips are actually designed to take two. So you can put two cables under the same clip, which is a really nice feature. Yeah. Cool. So thanks to Solar Clips. Very good. Time to get these uh, bad boys on. <laughs> Remember I said that they are both 35 mil and 30 mil clamps. Well, they're actually currently set up for the 30 mil uh, thickness frame, so I've just got to swap the nuts over um, to the other screw hole, and now I've got a 35 mil uh, end clamp. So end clamps are your best friends because sometimes when you're installing a long string of panels, you've got to take a lunch break or a comfort stop, and that's when you need an end clamp just to secure everything so that you can climb off the roof and the whole thing doesn't unzip while you're away. So end clamps. Are your best friends. Have a spare one in your pocket, uh, not just the, the bare minimum for the kit. Now we're going to work out where we're going to hang this. Now normally the microinverter is behind the panel. Um, perhaps the, the little light is visible from the side, but I'm going to put it right in the middle uh, of these two here because I want to be able to show people this unit. So it's going to go, or maybe up here, right in the middle of the unit.
this is our AC supply. So what we've got here is a glanded connection that we can put some circular uh, uh, cable onto, so a bit of orange circ or grey circ, uh, and keep it out of the weather. So because uh, if you're using a cable that's not rated for UV, you should put it in conduit and keep it out of harm's way. This will all be hidden behind the unit. It'll be tucked in behind here like this. And connecting through to a switchboard uh, and a uh, circuit breaker. Whereas this is the, the blank end. Now, if you have multiple microinverters as you would normally have, this will just connect to uh, the, the other trunking cable and carry on. So there will be a fixed number, but the maximum number based on the cable rating of the cable. Um, but you can certainly uh, chain together uh, quite a few of these units to build an array. Now what's really interesting, and I probably haven't mentioned this already, is that these panels are different. Well, I have, but one's a 415 watt and one's a 370 watt. It actually doesn't matter with microinverters. The panels can be all different types. They can be different um, cell types, different capacities, different voltages, as long as they're within the window of the microinverter. If the microinverter's operating window is uh, uh, met, then the microinverter will convert to AC and parallel its output with all the other microinverters. So it's one of the great advantages for expandability of a system. You don't have to keep matching your panels. They might look nicer if you did, but you don't have to. So I'm going to be using a technique here known as the <laughs> chopping block mounting system because I'm doing this by myself and uh, the chopping block sort of comes in handy to hold the panel up. Now it's really important after mounting your panels, whether it's on a roof or on a wall like this, is to check you haven't pinched any cables behind the panels themselves. It's one of the other causes of an earth fault uh, is that you've compressed the cable and you'll get what's called cold flow of insulation. So the insulation actually starts to thin because of compression and eventually crack and water gets in. And because the modules need to be earthed so that the inverter can detect an earth fault, bingo, an earth fault alarm will go off. <laughs> Be nice of my level, the bubble <laughs> was a bit better. There we go, got the bubble. <sighs> Beautiful. She's level. Well, vertical. <laughs> That's our DC connection. This is the end of our AC, which actually is uh, designed to go onto another microinverter, or if this is the last microinverter in the chain, this is the uh, weatherproof water uh end plug for the AC connection. Well, thanks for watching. I hope that was helpful. Uh, there's a few tips there about installing solar panels and microinverter systems, even down to how to put the clips on. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, you know what to do. Give us a like, subscribe and all that, and I'll see you in the next one. Check it.